So hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us this afternoon. Today is our first episode of the new Environment Office's nuclear webinar series. So we're just gonna give it a few minutes here, maybe five minutes just to allow some more people to sign in um, and then we'll get everything going. All right, so I see that we have a few people signed in. Thanks again for joining us. So if you are just tuning in, my name is April and I'm gonna be your host today. So again, we're just waiting for a few more people to sign in. We'll just give it about a minute or two. Um, but I'd be interested to hear where you are coming in from. So if you wouldn't mind just tapping, typing in that chat box, your city, and I can just get a sense of where all our attendees are. Hi, Jonathan. So coming in from Branch County, welcome. I see we have Shirley from Sagin. Thank you for joining us. We're excited to be starting this series. So again, just giving it about a minute or two just to make sure things are, people are signing up and getting on here. All right, so I'm gonna try to do what I was trying to do earlier. So just bear with me for a minute. I'll just turn off my sound so I don't get that feedback again. Okay. 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 Nope. Nope. Stop. 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 There we go. Now that's working. So again, thank you for joining us. Um, I think we'll just get started now. It's two o five. So, welcome everybody to episode one of the Environment Office's Nuclear Webinar Series. My name is April, and I am the community. Engagement Manager with the Saugeen Ojibwe Nation Environment Office. So I've been with the office for almost five years now, and I first started out as the event planner. Over the past few years, I've planned a number of events, including the Free Prior and Informed Consent Conference in 2018, uh, the Denny's Dam ribbon cutting ceremony, as well as many community sessions for various projects with the office. So today's episode is going to introduce you to what the series is and what you can expect from it in the next coming weeks. And we're going to give you an overview also of the materials we sent out earlier in January. So right now, I'd like to introduce my co-host, Carlene, who is joining me from the office and will be helping me with out throughout today's webinar. Thanks, April. Uh, My name is Carlene Kijik. I'm the Community Outreach Associate for the Saugeen Ojibwe Nation's Environment Office. All 
Thanks, Carleen. So before we jump into things, I do want to explain what those buttons are on your screen and how you can interact with us throughout the webinar. So the first button you're going to see is the chat button. I think it's going to be about your left hand side or somewhere on your screen, depending on what you're using a phone or a laptop. But with this button, you can send Kyleen and I messages directly and we can answer those uh, for you. Um, the next button we have is the raise hand button. So if you select this, uh, we'll just send you a private message to see what's going on and how we can help you. Uh, we also have the Q&A function, which is where you're going to post questions for us. So feel free to put any of your questions in there and we'll either answer those live on screen or we'll just type those in and everyone will be able to see that answer as well. And finally, Throughout the webinar, you might a poll might pop up, and we're just trying to get some feedback from you and just to see where you stand on some issues. Uh, your answers are completely anonymous, and it's just to kind of get a sense of what you're feeling. So now that you know how to use those functions on your screen, let's get started. I'll pass things over to Carlene now. Thanks, April. Um, we're excited to bring you this webinar series. The goal is to provide you as community members of the Salvino Ojibwe Nation with accurate, unbiased information on the nuclear industry. We hope that in talking with people in various fields and areas of nuclear industry, you will gain a better understanding of the issues that face the Salvino Ojibwe Nation territory. We are reaching out to experts in the field and bringing these people to you to help give you a better understanding of the many facets of the nuclear industry. This isn't a one-sided issue that we take lightly. We want you to be fully informed on the industry and what it means for the territory. We hope that you'll be able to take something away from these webinars and get a sense of a bigger picture that the nuclear industry makes up. Now there are a lot of acronyms that our office uses. I'd like to first explain what these are. The first, the first one is SON, also known as Solving Ojibwe Nation. This represents the two communities of the Chippewas of Saugeen First Nation and the Chippewas of Nawash Unceded First Nation and their shared territory that encompasses over 2 million acres. The next acronym is OPG, Ontario Power Generation. This is the company that our communities engaged with on the low and intermediate level waste. Next, we have NWMO which stands for Nuclear Waste Management Organization. They are responsible for managing and finding a permanent storage solution for Canada's high-level waste. Another term you'll hear is DGR. This is a deep geological repository. This is the proposed solution for storage the waste from generating nuclear power. This involves digging 500 meters into the ground to create an area where the waste would, be re where the waste would remain. I hope that this clears up some things and helps you understand the presentation a little bit better. As you know, we have a nuclear waste issue in the territory. Last year, we held an unpresented vote on OPG's proposed DGR for low and intermediate level waste, and this result was no. This has stopped that project, and OPG is no longer pursuing a DGR as a storage solution for low to intermediate level waste within SON territory. However, this does not take away the waste or deal with the waste here in the territory. The new proposed project in the territory is NWMO High Level Waste DGR. Now we understand that there are similarities between these two. They are both deep geological repositories dealing with two different forms of nuclear waste. However, OPG's proposed DGR has been cancelled. NWMO is still conducting tests and studies of the area for the proposed high-level DGR, and they will be informing the members of SON of the project. Thanks, Carleen. So that just opened our first poll, and it should have popped up on your screen. So if you want, um, please submit your answers, and I'll just leave that open for a minute or two and see what kind of results we get there. So earlier this month, you should have received a package from our office. In it was a booklet outlining NWMO's proposed project along with an infographic. 
It was sent out to on reserve addresses and available on our members portal on our website, or you could have requested a digital digital copy through email. So I'm just going to close that poll now just to see where we stand. So I did get a few results there and I'll share those results with you. So it's good to see that, you know, you're, you would like to have more webinars like this. Um, you know, it's a new feature for us and we're just experimenting with it still. And we're trying to master that one-on-one um, -on -one meetings. Yeah, that's definitely something we can look into. Uh, Pre-recorded videos as well. That's another thing we are looking into at the office and emails. So yeah, we can definitely try and get more information out through email methods. So I'll stop sharing those. So thank you for taking part in that little poll there. So now I'm gonna pull up that infographic and just review the key differences between the projects. So you should be able to see that. So the biggest differences um, is that OPG's DGR is no longer a project and it will not happen here in its own territory. We wanted to show you both of these proposed DGRs side by side because one of the most common things we hear from community members is that you feel you've already made a decision about this issue. The truth is only one project has been dealt with, the low to intermediate level waste. But this, is, but this other project, DGR, is designed for a high level waste. This is the used fuel from the reactors and that it's what we're and that's what we are dealing with now. Thanks, Carlene. So now we have a short video that's going to go through that infographic in more detail and I'm going to play that now. So let me just pull that up. Deep geologic repositories. We have a nuclear waste issue in Saoking and Ishnabake. In 2020, the Saugeen Ojibwe Nation San communities voted no to OPG's proposed DGR for low and intermediate level waste. Now, there is a new decision ahead. NWMO has purchased land in San territory to explore a different DGR for high level waste. We have outlined the key differences between the OPG DGR and the proposed NWMO DGR, starting with who. NWMO, or the Nuclear Waste Management Organization, is a federal organization with the mandate to develop and implement a long-term storage solution for Canada's used nuclear fuel. OPG, or Ontario Power Generation, is a crown corporation fully owned by the Government of Ontario. They gave consent commitments to SON in 2016 for NWMO and 2013 for OPG. NWMO's project status is that the site selection is in process, boreholes are to be drilled to test the suitability of rock and test underground conditions near Teeswater, Ontario in spring of 2021. OPG's project was cancelled after the SON free prior and informed consent vote did not support the project. Now we'll look at the waste. NWMO's proposed DGR is for high-level nuclear waste, used nuclear fuel. OPG's proposed DGR was for low and intermediate level nuclear waste. NWMO's site selection process is still ongoing. There are only two sites left in the process, the municipality of South Bruce near Teeswater, Ontario, Son Territory, or Ignis, Ontario, which is Wabagoon Lake Ojibwe Territory. OPG's project was proposed to be sited on the Bruce Power site in Son Territory. NWMO's DGR will host used nuclear fuel that is transported from across Canada. OPG's DGR was proposed to host low and intermediate level waste from OPG's nuclear operating facilities, Bruce, Darlington, and Pickering, which are all in Ontario. Now we'll look at the size. NWMO's DGR is planned to bury the waste at a depth of 500 meters below ground. OPG's DGR was planned to bury the waste to a depth of 680 meters. Amount of waste. NWMO's DGR would host 5.4 million fuel bundles. OPG's DGR was proposed to host 200,000 cubic meters of low and intermediate level waste. Footprint of facility. 
and WMO's DGR would have a footprint of 0.65 times 0.5 kilometers above ground and 2 times 3 kilometers or 1,480 acres underground. OPG's DGR was proposed to be 70 acres underground. Distance from water and WMO's proposed DGR is approximately 35 kilometers from Lake Huron and close to the Teeswater River. OPG's proposed DGR was sited at 1 kilometer away from Lake Huron. Information prepared by the Environment Office of the Saugino Ojibwe Nation using information that's publicly available. So moving forward, you can expect more engagement efforts from NWMO's team. They will be explaining their project, what it is for, and how it works. What you can expect from the Environment Office is offering you webinars, and other activities that will help you understand not only what NWMO is proposing, but how the nuclear industry works as a whole. This is not our project to share or to give information on. That information must come from NWMO. We are here to help the community understand what it is that they are proposing, what they are doing, and we will help you understand this by talking to others. This may be in the form of scientists, other communities dealing with similar issues, geologists, or other experts related into the field, we are aiming to give you as much information as possible. Thanks, Carleen. So we're coming to the end of our presentation. Um, and oops. unfortunately, I don't think I was able to stream it on Facebook like I had hoped. I did have some technical issues there. But if you have any comments or questions that you'd like to pose to us right now, I'll just give you a few seconds to do that. But again, we are coming to the end of our presentation there. Um, so before we go, I'd actually like to quickly go over the Environment Office's new website and the members only portal. So we have a new website and members only portal that contains information that isn't open to the general public. You can find the latest information on projects here, upcoming events, and even create discussion boards with other community members. So this will be a really valuable tool to you as community members to keep up to date on current projects. And we'll, we're gonna post information here regularly. So if you haven't already done so, I would really encourage you to create a profile and check it out. Uh, you're also gonna find like past recordings of webinars like this on that, on that portal as well. So that concludes episode one of the Environment Office's nuclear webinar series. Thank you for spending the last 20 or so minutes with us. Next week, we're going to be hearing from Carl Kijik and how traditional stories relate to today's issues. If you have any further questions or would like to speak more with someone from the office, please reach out. Uh, you can find our contact information on our website, sogginojibwination.ca. Um, also, if you have any ideas for future episodes, we'd love to hear those. So miigwech and see you next week. Yeah, Bob Mumpy Guamin.